In this video, we will have a closer look at the flow profiles of both vapors and liquids through the distilling column. Let's focus first on liquids. Starting our way from the top to the bottom of the column, we first have the flow associated with the reflux. Recall, this represents the liquids recovered from the condenser and reintroduced back to the column for another pass at distillation. We'll call this flow rate L0 and represent it on the graph as follows. The overhead liquids flow from top to bottom until they reach the feed stage at almost a constant rate equal to L0, as depicted here. Notice that I said, almost a constant flow rate. Why is that? Because due to the intimate scrubbing inside the distilling column, some of the lightest components in the falling liquids may vaporize, and some of the heaviest components in the vapors may condense. This will undoubtedly affect the overall liquid flow. In this video, and for the sake of demonstration, we will assume that these changes are negligible. Now, once the falling liquid reaches the feed stage, the liquid flow rate will increase by an amount equal to the liquid flow rate introduced to the column. We'll call this amount L feed. Basically here, at the feed stage level, the liquid flow inside the distilling column increases from L0 to L0 plus L feed. From the feed stage, the liquids continue to flow downward at almost a constant flow rate to the bottom of the column. Here also and for the sake of demonstration, we assume that the scrubbing process has little impact on the overall liquid flow. Now, let's shift our attention to the vapors rising up through the column. Starting our way from the bottom to the top of the distilling column, the vapor flow is initiated by the reboiler. The bottom liquid is circulated through the reboiler, vaporizes, and then is reintroduced further up the column for another pass at distillation. We'll call this upward vapor flow V0 and represent it on the graph as follows. The vapors flow from bottom to top until they reach the feed stage at almost a constant flow rate equal to V0, as depicted here. Here also and for the sake of demonstration, we assume that the scrubbing process has little impact on the vapor flow. Once the rising vapor reaches the feed stage, the vapor flow rate will increase by an amount equal to the vapor flow rate introduced to the column. We'll call this amount V feed. Basically here, at the feed stage level, the vapor flow inside the distilling column increases from V0 to V0 plus V feed. From there, the vapors continue to flow upward at almost a constant flow rate to the top of the column, as depicted here. At the top of the distilling column, the overhead vapor is condensed. Part of the condensed vapors is recovered and reintroduced back to the column as external reflux. This amount is referred to as L0. The remaining condensed vapors constitute the distillate, referred to on the graph as D. The distillate flow rate can be symbolically represented as follows. It is the difference between the overhead vapor flow rate, V0 plus V feed, and the external reflux flow rate L0. In a similar manner, at the bottom of the distilling column, the residue flow rate can be symbolically represented as follows. It is the difference between the liquid flow rate, L0 plus L feed, and the boil-up flow rate V0.